thank you for your word. We thank you that it's true. We thank you, Lord, that we can go to your word and be encouraged and find a, a sturdy place to stand for Jesus in the revelation of who you are. Lord, we pray that you would help us tonight to see this, to be encouraged by it, and Lord, apply it to our lives and take it outside of this place and see you use our lives to bring glory to your name. In your holy name, Jesus, we ask this. Amen. Amen. Now, this scene of, of the gospel story takes place on the eve of the crucifixion of Christ. This is the day before Jesus would be crucified. And here his disciples are together in the upper room having the Last Supper uh, together. And it's it's an incredibly intimate setting. It's just Jesus and these disciples who can follow him all through his ministry. You know, they, there would be times whenever they would, you know, come apart from the rest of, of, the, of the public ministry that, that they were engaged in. And Jesus would have time when it was just him and the disciples just dealing with them. And there's an important thing there. There's an important uh, truth that we can see in the fact that Jesus would always take time with these people alone, with his disciples alone, the people who were following. Jesus wants that time with us. He wants time when he, when he deals with us, when he refreshes us, when he encourages us. So we see this intimate scene take place. You know, uh, the last uh, I am statement that we read about um, was when uh, Jesus uh, is talking to Martha in regard to Lazarus dying and, and being resurrected again. Martha was in a time of suffering. She was uh, hurting. And she was bereaved of her, of her brother. And Jesus, he, he deals with her. And he encourages her one-on-one. Um, uh, -on -one. And we see that um, the, the that this one and the next I am statements, they're all like this. They're all in intimate settings. They're all... Um, Pointed toward individuals or these small groups of the disciples, and no longer is it made in the, the big sweeping statements um, of the public ministry, but now it's come to the point where it's very intimate. And we look here at this particular I am statement, it's actually a summary of all the previous I am statements. Now, and I think that's really important what he says and when he says it. Now, here he is, like I said. This is the day before his crucifixion. He's going to be crucified the very next day. He knows this. He brings them together. It's the Last Supper. And here in John, he just unloads all kinds of information to these disciples. He, he's got a lot to say to them. He wants them to be encouraged. He's got very important things he says. And here he, he says this. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Now we go back and we look at the all the I am statements previously made up to this point. It's almost like he's wanting to remind them of all these things. All these revelations that he's given them up to this point and who he is. He wants to remind them in this last night that he has with them. He wants to remind them of all these things. All these Revelations of his character. Now, they're getting ready to go through this incredible trial. It's the, the greatest trial that they've been through in their lives up to this point. So he needs them to remember this. He needs them to be encouraged. He needs them to take strength and, and to, 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 to be bold in their faith based on who he is. Now, of course, he starts saying, he says, I am the way. Now, Jesus uh, begins... Uh, this statement was saying, I am the way. Now, the immediate implication is in regard to the question that Philip asked uh, after Jesus tells him that he's going to make a place and, and, and God the Father has intended this place for him. There's many mansions. He, he, he's told about this. And he says, I'm going to go on ahead of you and you know the way there. You know the way. How do they know the way? He's revealed the way to them. He's revealed that in himself to the disciples previously up to this point. He's revealed himself to be the way. Back here in uh, verse number four, he says, and when I go, you know, and you know the way. And Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? Now, Jesus had already told them back in John chapter 10, verse seven, I am the door. I am the door. He already revealed this aspect of his character to the 
disciples and to all the people that was listening to him. So he's revealed to me. He said, you know the way. You already know the way to where I'm going. I am the door. I am the door. And he also says in uh, verse 11, chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. So Jesus is the way. He's the way to peace. He's the way to safety. He's the way to provision. He's the way to joy. He's the way to gladness. He's the one who leads us with care and intimacy to uh, the abundant life. And it, it is through Jesus Christ that we can have true revelation of God the Father. He tells them, I am the way. I'm the door. I'm the shepherd. I'm what leads you. I'm what directs you. I will lead the way to the revelation of who the Father is. And he tells, he's like, you know the way. I'm going there. I'm going to go ahead of you. I'm going, the Father's preparing a place. And, and there's many mansions there. And you know the way. How do we know the way? I've revealed the way to you already. I am the way. <coughs> now, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Peter says this, preaching to the Sanhedrin. He says, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, this tells us that Peter, between this night, that he hears this, and he, to the day that he's preached in front of the Sanhedrin, roughly 50 some odd days, 53 days, here he is, he's preaching this, he got the revelation of who Jesus was. He has a much deeper revelation from this point till then than what he has whenever he's first hearing this, that Jesus is the way. He said, there's no other way. This is the way. Now, this is one thing that the, uh, the early church preached very straightforward was the exclusivity of Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There's not all these different roads. <coughs> There's no other way that we can be saved. There's no other way that we can get to heaven. There's no other way that God, <coughs> the creator of all things, can be revealed to us other than through his son, Jesus Christ. That's what Peter is preaching to. There's no other way of salvation. There's no other way of revelation. There's no other way of regeneration. There's no other way that we can know God, that we can be saved, that we can know that we have a home in heaven. There's no other place of stability that we can stand. There's no other rock that we can stand on other than the revelation of Jesus Christ. He said, he's telling them, Jesus tells them this night, I am the way. What is the way? I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I will be the what leads you to the revelation of God. No other name. <laughs> Jesus reminds these disciples on the eve of his crucifixion. He knows that they would need this truth to stand on. They know. See, that, that is one of the great aspects we have of um, uh, of, of the preaching of the early church is that they knew this. They had conviction of it. They were willing to die for this very truth. That there was no other way. There was no other way. You, did, you couldn't just go and keep the law. You couldn't just go and make the sacrifices anymore. You couldn't go through any other method other than Christ. They were willing to die for this truth. Jesus knew that they would need this conviction. This rock to stand on. He encourages them to not before he's going to die and leave them. That I am the way. We can still take courage in this knowledge. That through Christ we have salvation, a home in heaven, and access to the Father. We know that through Him that we can have peace and joy and gladness. We know that we are saved because He is the only way. He is it. He is the way. When we have found the way, if we have found Christ, if we've been born again, we've been regenerated, we have been resurrected from the death of sin, we have found the way that we are called to walk therein. Amen. Jesus goes on to say that he is the truth. John 14, 14 and 2 says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Now, one thing that, um, that I emphasize a lot we emphasize here in our church is that God is a man of His word. Now, I mean, we can trust Him. If, you know, in, 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 in the Sermon on the Mount, um, that's one thing uh, Jesus tells us. He's like, Let, you know, don't be swearing. Don't swear by your head. Don't swear by the temple. Don't swear by anything. Let your yea be yea, your nay be nay. What that means is be people of your word. Don't have you, you shouldn't. Your character should speak for itself. You 
You shouldn't have to swear. You shouldn't have to make these big uh, promises. You shouldn't have to do all this stuff. Your word, your character should be enough that people take you for your word. Amen. Your, your word should be good enough. Your character should say, if that person says they'll do something, they'll do it. Your word should be that. And he said, and the, he is that. He is a man of his word. If he tells us something, we can put our faith in it. We can believe it. We can trust him because of his word, of who he is. His character has proven that for us. He says, if this was not so, I would not have told you. Now, Hebrews 6 and 13, and I, I, this, I always love this scripture, I, I, I reference it often, it says, for when God made promise to Abraham because he could sh swear by none greater, he swore by himself. He swore by himself, there was none greater that he could uh, approve, there was nothing that he could say, nothing that he could prove by the, the sun, the moon, the stars, Jupiter, he could, and none of that, it was, his word was enough. His word was enough. There was nothing greater that he could swear by than his own word. And I remember Sunday we talked about the, the scene in Mark chapter 4, whenever the disciples were on the boat. The storm takes place. They all and they accuse Jesus. That's one of the things that happens in that. There it is. The storm's taking place. The boat's being filled with water. They go to him. You don't even care that we're getting ready to die. Now, he had told them just previously, just before that, we're going to the other side. Now, they get to the end of that, and they say, well, when they see him calm the, the, the storm, then what manner of man is it? If they had known what manner of man he was, they would have been able to take him at his word and not accuse him of not caring about them whenever they found themselves in the storm. Because his word is truth. Not only is his word truth, but he is the truth. He is the embodiment of the truth. He is the purest example of what truth is. So, here he is. He's telling these disciples all this night before he's leaving, not only am I the way, and if you found me, if you're with me, you know of the way to salvation, but I am the truth. I am what you can stake your claim in. I am what you can stand on. I am what you can believe and put your hope in. I am truth. To believe it. <laughs> now John 8 and 12 says this. Then Jesus spake, and then spake Jesus again, and then saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now remember, this, this I am statement, the way, the truth, and life, is a summary of all the other I am statements. Uh, he says, I am the way. We know the way that the door of the shepherd represents that he is the way. And here he is. He says, I, the truth. The truth always is light. Whenever things are brought to light, that means we're seeing the truth. Whenever the situation, whenever the truth comes out, it comes out into the light where it can be seen. It can be examined. It's not hidden anymore. And he says, I am the light. I am the illumination. I am where we discover reality and truth. And he says, and you, know, you shall... And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He is the truth, and if we know him, then we know what true freedom is. Now remember, if we know the promiser, then we can believe the promise of the promiser. But it's only as we have revelation of the truth. Only as we come into the light and see him as it is. Uh, I, ha I have to know the truth of who Jesus is. And then I can trust his word. I can't trust him if I don't know him. If I don't see him in the illumination of the light. If I'm not having the revelation of who he is. The character of Christ. The truth of Christ. Then I cannot believe his word. But if I know him. It's just like those disciples. If they knew what man or man he was. Then when he said let us go to the other side. The storm could have come. There could have been waves crashing. Being the water filled the boat. But they would have said. Jesus said we're going. So we'll trust him in the storm. Remember the rebuke is a very important aspect of that scripture because he doesn't rebuke them because they were in the storm. He didn't say you should have enough faith to get out of the storm. He rebuked them because they had fear during the storm. They didn't trust him during the storm. They didn't trust his word to be true. He says, I am the truth. We know truth by knowing him. The illumination of the light of the world. Amen. We come into the light and see him as he is. He no truth because he is true. Amen. He says, I am the light. John chapter 14, verse 9, 19, 20 says, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day, ye 
know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Now, this is a, still part of the same discourse that he makes the I am statement in. And he tells them, you know, that he's uh, alluding to his resurrection. And not just, he, he, he's putting together here two things. Of course, he's talking about his resurrection. I, I'm going to die. You're, you're not going to see me for a while. I'm going to be buried away. But I am going to live. I'm going to be resurrected. And not only am I going to be resurrected, but I'm going to, I'm going to be resurrected in you. I'm, you're going to be resurrected. I'm going to be in you just as I'm the Father, the Father in me. So you're going to experience resurrected life. You see, he, he, he's using in his own resurrection to teach the disciples about regeneration. He's given them some foreknowledge of things to expect. Not only to expect his resurrection from the dead, but expect them, him to do something great in them and be resurrected in them. For them to re realize what real life is. He's the way. He's the truth. And he is the life. They're going to experience real life by the resurrection of Christ within them. They see, he's given them all this, all this on the night before his crucifixion. He's wrapped up all these I am statements, all of one thing, and showing them what, who he is. It's just like, it, it does this oftentimes, whatever. He's always saying the, the, the prophet, or the, the whole Old Testament is wrapped up in this. Love the Lord, love your neighbor. That's all, that's the Ten Commandments. You took the first uh, part of the Ten Commandments, the second part of the Ten Commandments, they can be summarized in that. The first part, love God. Second part, Love your neighbor. And see, he's doing this with this I am statement. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the shepherd. I am the resurrection. All these things have been said. He's going to wrap it all up and say, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I'm all these things. You're going to need all these things, and I am the supply of all these needs. Remember, all these I am statements reveal something not only about who he is, but something that we need out of him. And it can be summarized in saying he is the way. I'm going to learn how to walk. I'm going to learn where to go. I'm going to follow him. I'm going to take him across, go after him, and he will lead me in the way that I need to go. In this life, all the way through into the next. I don't have to grow through the darkness. I don't have to be worried. I don't have to doubt. I don't have to be uh, trying to find someone to tell me what to do. He says, I am the way. We follow him. He's given us the he's, he's wrote it down for us. Amen. He's wrote the instruction down. All we have to do is learn of him. Learn of who he is. And we'll find the way. And not only that, we'll find the truth of who he is. And in the illumination of the truth of Christ, we'll find life and resurrection from what we are. Amen. He says, Yet a little while the world seeth me no more, but ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Now this tells us that God wants us to understand that by the blood of Jesus, not only has he the power over a natural death, but also the power over spiritual death. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 4. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love for which he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We've been resurrected. If we've been born again, we know what life is. Is. We know what it means to be alive in Christ, not just alive now, not just having a, a provision for now, but a spiritual life. And he said in John 6 and 35, I am the bread of life. Now, we can, we, we can naturalize that by saying that God provides for us, and he does. He makes that clear. He provides the bread of life in that regard, but he is also sustenance for my spiritual life. He is spiritual sustenance for me. He is what I need to continue living, to live in this world, to walk in his ways, to be victorious, to represent him. I need the bread of life that is found only in Christ. But in uh, John eleven twenty five, 25, he says, I am the resurrection. Now we see these two statements both pertain to life. The one is in the context of sustaining life. The other is in the context of bringing what is dead to life. Now, Jesus tells us that in him is everything we need to be resurrected from the dead. 
We need his resurrection. I can only be resurrected from the death of sin by Christ. And I, 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 it's like the old cartoon with the, the lady's tied on the train track and the train's barreling down and, and, and then she's completely helpless and hopeless. There's nothing that she can do to resurrect herself. There's nothing that she can do to set herself free from the condition that she's in. We were dead. We were absolutely dead. There's nothing that a dead person can do to bring themselves back to life. But he who is the resurrection, he brings us to life. He brings us to spiritual life. We, he opens our eyes. He brings us into the life. He shows us the way. And he supplies what we need to continually walk on victorious in him by him being the bread of life. He says, everything that you need is wrapped up in me. Everything that we need. And that's the that's the um, that's the point of this I am statement right here. Now, there's one more I am statement. And we're not going to talk about it tonight, but it's it's important that before he gets to that last one, he summarizes the other five in this one. He wants them to be reminded. He wants this to be something that they take and they, they, they listen and they apply and they leave that upper room with this in mind. See, they may, have, they may have forgot some of that stuff. They may have forgot some of those earlier statements. So he wants to bring it back and remind them this one more time before he leaves, before he's going to go to the crucifixion, before he's going to go to the grave. He reminds them one more time that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. All those previous five wrapped up in that one statement. The, the, the bread, the life, the door, the shepherd, the resurrection, all right there. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Amen. So, in closing, read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Like I said, the, the I am statements. He's, he's moved through those aspects slowly. He, he's, he went piece by piece to reveal to us who he is and the need that he wants to supply for us. Now, especially spiritually speaking, a lot of times we don't even know how much need we have. We don't know the, how destitute we are. And you know, he reveals to us the need. But in his mercy and his gentleness, his graciousness, as he reveals to us our need, our depravity, he reveals to us his supply. He's like, this is, this is where you stand. This is the hopelessness that you have. But this is what I got for you to build that hopelessness up. That's, to me, that's wonderful to think about that. Is as he reveals to me how much I need him, he would also at the same time reveals how much he wants to fill that void of need doesn't, and that's what the I am statements are all about. He's revealing to us a need we have for spiritual bread, a need we have for spiritual light and illumination, a need that we have for guidance and, and a way into the be with the Father, a need we have for spiritual resurrection. He reveals these things to 